So when we look at the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John reveals the Lord Jesus Christ, reveals this man Jesus as God come in the flesh. He's revealed as Emmanuel. He's revealed as the great I am, the same great I am that spoke to Moses on the mountain in Exodus chapter 2 is the same great I am. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. He's on and on about various I am's. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, before Abraham was, I am. And he does use the present tense there, indicating that he does exist in the eternal now. He is always has been and always will be because he always is. We'll look more at that as well. And especially, again, that's another topic that's touched upon the last chapter of Hebrews, chapter 13, which we can look at at another time. Now, when we look at the Gospel of John, we also see a large focus on belief and on condemnation. Those who believe are not condemned. Those who do not believe are condemned already. We see a large focus on Jesus as Savior. We see a lot of focus on Jesus as the resurrection and the life. Not just the one who is resurrected from the dead, but the one who actually is the resurrection from death. There are so many aspects in the Gospel of John that speak of the deity or the Godship of Christ that after reading the Gospel of John, there's no way to deny that Jesus himself is clearly identified not only as the Son of God, but as God the Son. And that's particularly important because then what we have is we have that second person of the triune Godhead, that second person of what uh, sometimes is referred to as the Trinity, which is nothing more than the Father as the Father of the Godhead, that one person of the Godhead. We have, we sometimes would call him the Governor. We have the Son, who is the obedient servant, but not only the obedient servant, but also the righteous judge. When judgment is announced in the world, it's not going to be the Father that pronounces the judgment. It will be the Lord Jesus Christ, and we will see that many times over, even looking throughout the Gospels, and then as we continue through the New Testament. And then we also see the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. When we worship God, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. We will learn that it's the Holy Spirit that quickens our mortal spirit at the moment of our salvation. He is also the glue that binds us to God until the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit we often see as the one who is interactive. He's busy working on the elements that have been created. He, his hand is always active among mankind in some how or another, or his hand is always active on the workings of the earth in some way or another. Back in Genesis, when we look at the Holy Spirit, we see the very first thing that he does is he comes and he broods over the water. He looks at the water, he watches over them, he broods over it, he gets involved in caretaking very, very quickly. He still does that for us today. So again, as a recap, we have four Gospels. Sometimes the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, is sometimes called the fifth Gospel because it is the accounting of what Jesus both began to do and to teach. It's the next generation following the Lord Jesus Christ himself here on earth. Sometimes this group of five books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts, are referred to as the New Testament Pentateuch, the New Testament five-book group, because they all do go together. And they are very similar in nature and in structure to the Pentateuch of the Old Testament, also known in Hebrew as the Torah or the Torah, and that would be Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the five books of the law. And when we look at these five books, we see the Lord Jesus Christ as the fulfillment of Old Testament scripture concerning Messiah. We see the person and the work of Christ. We see the nature of the man Jesus and we see God come in the flesh. That's the focus of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then the book of Acts following that is the record then of what Jesus both began to do and to teach, being continued on first in Jerusalem, 
then in Judea, then in Samaria, a neighboring and often enemy country, and then finally to the uttermost parts of the world in Paul's missionary journeys. So there pretty much is a clear synopsis of the four Gospels. Beginning in the next message, we'll begin looking at Matthew chapter 1, and we'll go through the four Gospels, verse by verse and section by section, until we complete the study.